Hello, welcome to the special episode where we reveal the winners of some of our EFL awards for 2023. We'd like to thank everyone who has voted and we congratulate everyone who was nominated. If we could award you all, we would. Let's crack on. It's the lower league look. 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 So guys, we are now joined by, we have Dan joining us from the Ale and the Vale, not Ale and Vale, um, as I've clarified, just double checked, uh, podcast, the Port Vale podcast. Obviously last season we're in League Two. We've never actually had a chance to speak to these guys because we didn't start working with podcasts till the summer and they'd already gone up north. I say up north, upper league. Um, but yeah, thanks for coming on. Welcome. No Welcome, problem. Man. Thanks for having me. Not a problem. Um, so yeah, you, you are nominated for the League One Podcast of the Year. Uh, yeah, tell us a little bit about what you guys do there, why you do it, and you know what how long you've done it for. Yeah, yeah. That one as well. That's what. To be fair, we've been doing it for about three years since COVID, and one Ooh. of the lads that set it up, Stewie, moved to Canada. And when he moved, he was like, I want to do something, keep in with the club that kind of keeps me interested, keeps yeah. me going. So he said to me and Johnny, will you start a podcast with me? And literally, that was the brainchild come from there. So then we had a discussion about how we want it to feel, how we want it to look. And we were like, look, we just want it to be like three mates in the pub before the game, after the game, having yeah. a chat about how they think the game will go and then how the game went, etc. And that's where the name Ale and the Vale come from. Obviously, play on words with Ale and Vale. But it come from the theme of three blokes in a pub having a chat. And to be fair, a lot of the feedback we get from the Vale fans that listen is that it is like just being in the pub and they're the fourth mm. person just listening into the conversation. And that's exactly how we wanted it to be. So yeah. for three years, we've been doing that. And then Stu got a full-time job in Canada, how dare he, and decided he hadn't got the selfish, time to commit. Selfish, Stu. Very, very selfish. <laughs> so what we do now is me and Johnny are on every podcast and then we've got like a revolving third guest. So we've got a group of people and we mix it up between who comes on, which is good because it gets different viewpoints on and gives mm, people different f- people to bounce off. Keeps it fresh as well, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely does. And we enjoy doing it. Yeah, it's a good feeling. That, that, that feeling that you've gone for, you know, the mates down the pub thing, I think that's what makes it more relatable, doesn't it? It's... That's what people want to listen to, especially when COVID was the, was was keeping everyone indoors. That feeling of being down the pub with your mates and having the chat about the teams that you love, it's, that's what it was all about. I mean, we, we started doing this out of, I think, boredom originally. <laughs> it was. We, were, we just wanted to do like, a couple of guys just wanted to talk lower league football, really, wasn't it? Yeah. That was it. Yeah. I think it was when the EFL fixtures for Sky were released at one point and we were like, again... No one's looking at the lower league, so we, we started doing that. And I, I get 100% like why you guys do it the way you do it. It's the, it's the best way to be. It's the most watchable and the most relatable. You can just put it on in the background. Um, so nominated for League One Podcast of the Year. Obviously, you've only just gone up into League One. It's your first season. Yeah. What, what do you think about being nominated? Yeah, really humble, to be fair, because we knew nothing about it till it come up. We've been nominated and we're in the final four. So really humbled because it isn't like we've gone out and canvas votes. We've just yeah. found out we were nominated. And funnily enough, at the start of the season, the Vale chair lady come on, Carol, and mm. she asked the podcast, what are you going to do to get championship ready? You know, over the years, we want to get to there and what are you going to do to get championship ready? And what better way to be championship ready than be nominated for an award? I like it. I like it. That's So she's aiming for championship? In the long term, yeah. you know, we're under no illusions that it isn't going to happen overnight. You've got to build the club from the bottom upwards. And since they've come into Vale, that's exactly what they're doing. The club now mm-hmm. is completely unrecognisable. And under the old ownership, the only way we were getting out of League Two was down the trap door and we'd have been an old and we'd have been a scumthorpe. Luckily, yeah. new owner come and change the perspective of the club, the way the club's ran, even the feel around the club now. It's a proper family club and families are welcome and clued. He's in. That all stems from Carol and the way that she runs the club. So you just said there that you want to become championship ready and you said what better way to become championship ready than be nominated for League One Podcast of the Year. Yeah. I can think of one better way, Grant. Can you think of one better way? I can think of a better way. I can. Well, they might not be winning a League One title. But ladies and gentlemen, your League One podcast of the year, Ale and the Vale. Hey! Wow. wow. 
honestly cannot believe that. Totally, totally humble. That's that's amazing. It honestly is. Can't believe we've won. Congratulations. Uh, you made something you'll be gutted he didn't come now, will He will, he will. He's putting <laughs> Little in bed, Johnny. Yes, we have to plan the podcast around when Little goes bed and he was hoping to come on and he's putting yeah. Little in bed, so he'll be over yeah, the moon yeah. when I tell him. We're having to do the exact same yeah. because my little one's going to bed and well, I'm getting him ready for bed in 10 minutes. So, yeah, <laughs> our, our entire same. thing is, is planned around <laughs> children. Grant's got a, a six month old, is he now, Grant? Six months, yeah, yeah, and I've got a two month old, so we're, we're both in this position where we have to do it. But yeah, honestly, congratulations. You were there were over 700 votes in the original like polls. And you became you came top four of the League One votes, and then it went to a panel of ten, and that ten voted. We all we, we had to watch the individual podcasts, and you you've won. You've got wow. the most votes, and yeah. Well, I don't ask which episode it was that you listened to because if it was after the Accrington Stanley one, there was a bit of a rant there about a certain <laughs> referee. But that's that's what's good about those sort of things because you 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 give that true perspective of a fan and. You, you kind of say what everyone's feeling. And I think sometimes when you when you are a fan and you're feeling shy about something that's happened at a game, when you hear someone else saying it, you go, you know, I'm, I'm not just thinking it myself. This is It validates your opinion, doesn't yeah, it? As well? It really does. Um, but yeah, you have uh, you have won the League One podcast of the year. Wow. Over the moon, honestly. I can't tell you. Thank you very much. And the other guys, John is getting gutted. He couldn't come on now. And <laughs> I'll ring him when we finish, give him the good news because we're made up because we didn't know anything about it. So, like yeah. I say, we didn't even go canvas votes to get into the top four. So that makes it even more special to me. Yeah. It's organic, isn't it? You've got you've got the people that listen to you every single time you put something out and they've all they've all come together and voted. And uh, you know, I'll be honest, like a, a few of the people that have won. Uh, are in a similar positions to yourself like they, they didn't ask for votes they didn't expect the votes but they got them and that's kind of i think where where it comes from because there are a few podcasts and i'm not going to name names but they know they are that get a bit big for the boots sometimes and they they i think they'd expect to be in these positions and unfortunately i think they haven't actually been nominated but you know, it's it is what it is. Stay humble and keep doing what you're doing, and it's it's cracking. Just have, just have fun, isn't it? Yeah. As long as, you're, yeah, as, long as you're having fun, that comes across in the content that you're creating, and that's what we all like to listen to. No, well, thank you very much. Appreciate it. And we try to give the different views because you know Johnny manages the Sunday League side. Okay, it's only Sunday League, but probably better than some of the managers in League One. And <laughs> you know, I'm a referee, so I can give the perspective of a referee at times, and we yeah. do mix it up and give that. And you know, there's times where we'll come on and say the Vale fans are wrong and what they say yeah, yeah. decision wise. From a referee's perspective, I can say actually the ref got it right. The Accrington one, I can say the ref got it bang wrong. <laughs> <laughs> well, congratulations. Um, do stick around. We are we're gonna move on to the next uh category. category. We don't know what it is, but yeah, so the transition's gonna go whoosh across the screen. It's not because we're recording it in bits, but stick around, we'll have another chat in a minute. Um, guys, the next category and the next guest is joining us. Guys, we are joined by Aaron Challoner. You know who he is. We don't really need to tell you who he is. He's everywhere I, I i took over a non-league twitter page last night and he already followed it before i got I, I, as soon as i clicked it i was like again? if you need to ask who Charles is you've not been following anything league two on twitter <laughs> you're in the wrong place if you don't know who chal is uh, but chal welcome welcome thank back you thank you very much it's uh, yeah. great to be here again fantastic I think the last time we had you on was pre-season yeah, uh, with Jills in the blood. Yep, and I'm already dreading the end of this season. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> and uh, weirdly, you're finishing exactly where we said you would. <laughs> you were shocked. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. After, after after Tuesday, I think it could be worse than what you predicted. Uh, no, I think you'd be. I think you'd be roughly all right. But that's not why we're here this week. We're not here to talk about really Doncaster because we ain't got years. Um, but <laughs> we're to talk about you because you were nominated for. I believe League Two Blogger of the Year. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about each individual. You were nominated for a couple of things. So we're talking about what you were nominated for. Charles, tell us a little bit about what it is you do and, you know, what, what you think about being nominated. Um, so the main focus of my channel is match reports. So rather than vlogs, it's match reports uh, from Don Strober's games. Uh, there's other sport content. They'll be on there as well. Got rugby this week. 
and also there's theme park content on there as well so it's a real mixture of theme parks and sports i do what i do not for the fame not for the money not for the memes but i do it because i want to inspire young people to have that love for their clubs i don't think there's a lot of love in lower league football compared to the premier league so i feel mm -hmm. like it's nice to try and inspire that next generation and really grow the football league uh from our point of view as influencers and reporters um so it's always good to to get people interested and to have people recognize you every day is always you know it, it touches me at the heart it really really does you know people don't understand how much goes into content so it, it really does you know it really does affect me a lot positively when uh, you get recognition you get people around you saying you're doing doing a good job it means you're doing something right it's it's a uh... See, we're the opposite. We are in it for the money and the fame. Um, <laughs> the issue, the real sticking point that we've got is that there's neither currently for us. Yeah, yeah. There's no, no money, way. there's no fame, there's just a lot of headaches and quite a lot of abuse in our DMs. But oh, the Donny fans are awful. How, 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 long, have you, how long have you done this for, Chow? So in, overall in YouTube, I've been doing it for about two or three years uh, overall across Coastal Chow and Chow, but then combining the two, it's not been going that long, combining the two. So overall, a couple of years. Thanks. Yes. What did it mean to be to be nominated? Like, what obviously, when you found out and you got the tags and people were putting you forward, like, very mad there were, there were, I think, 700 people voted on the overall thing. Like, so there were 700 mm. individual votes for different things, and you were the... In these categories, you were the like the top the, four. The, the, yeah, the top four of each. Um, it's yeah, it's bizarre. It, it it blows your mind. It really, really does. You know, Donny's not had a positive season, and to be one of the only positive things consistently in that season, it means a lot to me personally. Um, you know, like I said, it always it's always great. To Ladies and gentlemen. We'd like to take this moment to congratulate Aaron Chaliner on winning the League 2 Player of the Year award. Congrats, you little shit. Hey! So, in case you've not worked it out, you have won League 2 Blogger of the Year. No, I, d I had no idea. Gen well, yeah, this is the thing that's, we that's why we recorded an intro separate that no one could see because... Everyone who's watching this knew when you came on that you'd won because we've told them all in the intro. Um, but yeah, genuinely, mate. Uh, yeah, congrats. congrats, League Two Blogger oh of the Year. God. Um, yeah, it was quite an easy vote, I think, for, for us. We we knew, I mean, I don't know about you, Grant. I, I, I voted, I knew what I was voting for. Uh, yeah, congrats, mate. Well done, man. Wow, well deserved. Um... Love it, we, we love the content. We, oh, no. we also we also love the memes as well. Yes, um... <laughs> yes we do. <laughs> I still I'm going to tell everyone a story now because not everyone listens to six or six. So I met up with Chal a couple of weeks ago at Donny, and when we first met up, he said, "Oh, can we record something for my vlog?" Yeah, of course we can, Chal. I said, "But I'm not telling people that I do lower league look because there's some Donny fans that don't like me here. So you know, I'm going to keep that quiet." And he goes, "Yeah, not a problem." <laughs> Press his record, he goes, so guys, I'm here with Liam from the lower league look, and I just turned out <laughs> and went, fuck's sake, Chal. Gosh, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, Chal, it goes, is that in one ear with you and just out the other? Yeah. And then something it's else just, comes out your mouth, it's great. It's just it's just me, it's just me. Um, <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really blown away. Um, I really didn't expect that. With, with who I was nominated against, I really wasn't expecting that. Um, no, that oh god, I'm a rat now. Um, <laughs> that mean, no, that means a lot. That means that that honestly, that means so much with the year I've had personally as well. It means so much. Um, is this, is this the time where I get to thank everybody? Um, yeah, yeah, go for it. Then. You go. Go for it. I mean, um, remember, we don't have too long. Yeah, no, no, of course. There's no, there's no thanking, you don't get to thank God and all that. <laughs> it's not the Oscars. You keep no, Will Smith's gonna... wife out, wife's name out of your mouth as well because Will Smith doesn't like that. <laughs> yeah, go wild. Oh man, I'm going to keep it short and sweet though. Um, no, I've been short that. and sweet with you, Chad. <laughs> um, no, first of all, I want to thank my family because they've always been really supportive. Um, you know, it's been a tough year for us and it's. You know, it's it, we, we had to really stick together and, you know, I've had to put on this nice, I've had to put on this facade at times where everything's all right and it's sometimes not. 
So to keep to, to have that support around you has been fantastic. Um to everyone that's ever watched the content or anything like that, it's again, it just means a lot personally. It really does. Uh, I'm gonna keep doing what I do. Uh, I'm going to keep doing it because I love the damn thing. And I'm just going to keep doing it because I, I, I just love football. I love the sport. And, and and I didn't know what love was until I found football. So I just love it to bits. And just, oh, God, just thank you very much. <laughs> God, Grant, I need to sound bite of Hadaway, what is love there. Because he said, I don't know what love was. And it could go, what is love? <laughs> it into it, a little highlight clip of Chal. Again. Um, there we go. <laughs> Yeah, honestly, mate, it, it is well deserved, and we like. I, I know that you don't do it for to be funny, but like when you record, it is just generally funny to watch, yeah. and and like you don't mean it. And some of the I, I've sat and watched your videos, and you've started a sentence, and I've thought, where's he going with this? And then and the he goes the complete other way. Yeah, and and I sit there afterwards thinking I could have wrote a million guesses down as to where that was going, and that was not it. Like, I, I would have the, got that wrong. I think the first time that we got that was the the percentage gate, wasn't it? When you were saying the percentage of oh yeah, the manager, yeah. yeah, percentage faith in Gary McSheffrey. Yeah. was it sixty eight percent? It was. To be, I think it was sort of like sixty eight percent. To be but... fair, it all it all started on the football terrace when um, I called in a few times and I'd, I I had some nice funny reactions. I wasn't even a supporter of the clubs I was watching the games for. Uh, so shout out to the football terrace as well because they owe that they are, I owe a lot a lot of my early success to to them really because mm-hmm. um, they were sort of gave me the platform to speak in the first place and that got me the inspiration to speak and give the platform to other people. So uh, I owe a lot to the football terrace for the first sort of year. Um, okay. Yeah, that's where it all kind of started with the uh, the analogies and the the kind of lower league Mark Goldbridge type entertainment. <laughs> Max Goldbridge over here. Um, Shout out to Goldbridge because you're an inspiration. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll pass it on to him if you want. We can get it passed to him then. Yeah, sh- shout out to Goldbridge because you really, into, you, you, AFTV and for the gender football terrace, you guys all inspired me in the first year. So uh, big up to you guys. Cracking. Well, Chal, thank you very much for coming on. Congratulations again. Um, do stick around. But we, uh, yeah, we're just going to say thanks very much for coming on, and we're going to. Anyone that doesn't on. follow, yeah, follow give him a follow on. Tell us, tell us, tell us. What's your Twitter handle? D H A L L on YouTube. Aaron underscore Chalner on Twitter, and Aaron Chalner on TikTok. Tira for now. <laughs> <laughs> and we are on. Am I? Am I clear? Am I coming through clear? Yeah, loud and clear. Oh, it's beautiful, isn't it? Uh, guys, we are joined by Phil Eidson from the Hard Truth Podcast. It's not Dara. Um, Dara couldn't be here. He's a little bit busy at the minute, which in the run into the end of the season, I'm sure you can appreciate. Um, but Phil, thanks for joining us. Yeah. Welcome. You're welcome. I'm sorry that I'm not Dara, but um, you know, thanks for welcoming and inviting me onto the show. Anything to talk to a Bradford fan? Well, we've we we we've been here for nearly two hours, yes. not recording, talking Bradford. <laughs> so I'm delighted. This is the, one of the best nights I've ever had, and I've had three kids. Um, so Phil, you guys have won. We told you before. Other people that've been on didn't know when they came on. But you guys have won best overall podcast for the EFL. Congratulations on that because it was quite unanimous, really. Um, Ten, I think, seven hundred people individually voted mm. across the. The categories and then a panel of 10 chose out of the top four and you guys were unanimous in the in the best podcast overall for the efl so that's awesome and and thank you so much and thank you for anybody who who voted for us you know it's really interesting when you're doing a podcast you don't necessarily there's not a great feedback loop sometimes on what you're doing and the value and the interest that people uh, think um you know, there's plenty of negativity, as everybody knows, when they sometimes put themselves out there in a public forum. But you don't necessarily get that feedback loop. So uh, we're thrilled. And thank you so much. No, it, you do. You get the negatives. But negatives are always the loudest. And no matter what you do, you will always hear people that are unhappy. And I think, I think the reason people kind of take to what you do is that you guys have an inside view on football that no other podcast does. Like, as fans, we can say what we feel. Um, yeah. And we can say what we think, but it's so rare to have an owner of a club to be able to sit there and say, well, actually, this is how it works. And this yeah. is what I do. And this is, it's quite refreshing um, how forthcoming 
Dara is. Now, you're a Bradford fan mm -hmm. who lives in America. Yep. How on earth do you end up on a podcast with the owner of Peterborough United? <laughs> yeah, it's it's honestly not something that I ever thought that um, you know I would be doing. So I'm in my professional space. I run a business that has a podcast. It's just you know a B two B kind of business podcast. Um, so no connection with football. But you know I got into podcasting probably um was 2015 so what's that like eight years ago actually inspired by the bantams banter lads you know if you go back and listen to um the aston villa home game um in the cup i did a half time interview with them and right. um and that was like okay so I, I could maybe do a podcast so i started doing that and anyway you know fast forward a few years uh covid started um you know i was on the hunt for some new podcast to listen to and came across Dara, who'd started uh, his own podcast. And it was really just Dara, you know, kind of talking into a microphone, doing a monologue. And I, I heard that and I thought that there's an opportunity to build something here, you know, and bring some structure. Um, I knew that Dara, I live in Orlando, and I knew that Dara lived in the Orlando area too. So I just reached out, called email, and um, he was open to some ideas. And we, so we got together, we tried it out a few times, and... You know, I think that was three plus years ago. Um, we've been doing it most weeks, you know, at least during the season since. So it's been a real thrill for me as well, really, because I come to it as the fan, yeah. you know, the fan that doesn't know what's going on behind the scenes and asking the questions that you always want to ask an owner that you never get the chance to ask. So that's really kind of the position that I took in, um, uh, you know, the role that I play in the podcast. Do you, do you still get nervous asking those questions? Because I've been in positions where I'm able to ask those questions and I'm like, I get excited as it's coming and then like I'm like, do I ask it? Should I ask it? Do you still get that even three years later? It's funny. I don't with Dara because I feel like I'm talking to a mate. You know, it's kind of that um that relationship. And because we talk so much off mic that when the the mic, when the record button gets turned on, it's just like we're continuing our conversation. You know, when we do yeah. when we record in person, we'll have we'll probably chat for an hour and a half before we go and hit record. Um and so I think that that helps. I think as the, the the pod has matured as well, that's kind of changed kind of the dynamic between the two of us as we got to know each other more. It's funny, when I do my business podcast, I still feel it all the time. You know, you still get the butterflies before you hit record. I think that if you don't get that in some regard, then maybe you're not taking it seriously enough. Um, yeah. So I think that that's only natural. But, um, you know, when I started with Dara, I was certainly a lot more nervous and things like that than um, because at that point I knew Dara for his his um his public persona yeah. not the person that he is you know behind the scenes which is who i've got to know over the last few years does he get nervous still do you do you think that there's a do you think you can in his profession still get nervous when you're doing things because a podcast really is nothing compared to what he has to face as, a, right. as an owner as a club you know going out and speaking in front of fans at fans forums mm -hmm. and tv interviews and things like that like do you think he still gets nervous in any way with this I don't think so. You know, I think that he's just, he's speaks his mind, you know, yeah. and he comes out and just wants to, he's, you know, he's always had a philosophy of communicating about what's going on with the club. And that's how so many other supporters of other teams know him, you know, love him or hate him yeah. because he's very, um, you know, forthcoming on what's going on and his opinions. And at the end of the day, there is just a football fan like the, the rest of us. He just has been very successful in his career in a way that gave him the opportunity to kind of pursue the dream of owning a club, but he's still a fan. Um, so, I mean, I'm sure that there'll be days in his business life where, uh, you know, he still has the butterflies, but, you know, he, he just he, he brings himself as he is to the pod, and um, yeah. I, I don't sense any of that. Oh, I see, I mean... I think that again, that's why people kind of have taken to what you do because it, it's a laid back approach and you don't see that in football, especially mm -hmm. from owners and things. People see them as job titles. And yeah. it's something that I mentioned to you before about why we started to do this. What what Dara has done is he's humanized himself. Mm -hmm. He's shown them who he is as a person. And don't get me wrong, people still have criticism of him peter yep. fans which you know they're allowed they're entitled to do yep. that's you know they pay the money they're allowed to have their, their their voice um but it's a lot harder to do it with malice or any anger behind it when you know the person and you've seen that person speak from the heart and and just give a look sure you've seen their true side and personality um so for you guys then going forward 
from where you started to where you are now, you, mm-hmm. you're at a point where, like you say, you you guys, you turn up, you have a, an agenda that you go through, you you get it recorded and it, it gets out and it's it's weekly or yeah. you know four or five times a month, whatever it may be. What's the plan? Where do you see yourself going in the next ne- the next three years? Let's say. Yeah, I think that you know we're always going to be following. It's it's almost like a um, you know an audio version of you know, a TV show of a football club, a falling football club. So there's always that element of what football club ownership is like and, you know, the roller coaster that that goes on and the emotions that go behind it and how, you know, owners, you know, have the same ups and downs. In fact, um, accelerated and more elevated than supporters do because there's so much more on the line for them um, in terms of, you know, the business side of it. So you will be continuing to have insights into the journey um, along the way, I think we've always uh, felt that there's a place for, you know, digging into Dara's contact book a little bit more and doing some interviews. Um, because when we do them, they're always fun and they're always interesting. And, you know, they bring out the real people behind the personas that uh, so often, this is what I've learned, you know, as I've had the opportunity to interact with folks behind the scenes and some guests that we've interviewed is, you know, a lot of people in the football industry have a a, pers- a persona that's on the pitch or that's in the dugout that yeah. doesn't necessarily reflect the person that they are. And I'm sure you see that with all the player interviews that you do as well. Yeah. So I think there's definitely a desire to kind of tap into that um, uh, that network a little bit more and do more interview-based pods along the way. Yeah, and I think that'd be great for everyone to see as well because he, I'm sure he's got some big names in there mm. that he can pull out. Um for, for Dara, it's been kind of a a bit of an up and down season. He announced yeah. earlier in the season that he was going to step down. Then he announced that he wasn't mm-hmm. um, and he's going to stick around. But when that announcement of him stepping down came out, was was that ever going to affect you guys? Um, with him not owning a football yeah. club and he, he wanted to spend time with his kids, was he going to step back from what you do as well? We never really talked about that. And so, you know, I might be putting words into his mouth at the moment, but <laughs> I honestly think that not being connected with a club would give him a bigger microphone to say some of the things that he's, you know, at the end of the day, you can't share a hundred percent of the things that go on behind the scenes. There are legal contracts, confidentiality agreements, all those things that prevent you from, you know, you can share 90% or 95%, but you can't go all the way to sharing that hundred percent. So I think it would be interesting if he's not connected to a club that maybe he'd want to uncover a few more things. Um, but that's me just putting words into his mouth. I, I hope that those words are in his mouth. That would be <laughs> that would be good. Let's. Uh, but he's got to step down first, and I, you know, every time he kind of steps away, he gets pulled back in, and he's, you know, he, he's he's saved that club. Let's be honest. He, he took that club from the position it was in. They, they are a completely different club. They were a club that was running week by week. Mm-hmm. You know, they weren't paying bills. They weren't able to play bill, pay bills. Sorry, we all. We've all seen the documentary, the the, the, yeah. the the Barry Fry one, and which I think you said is the reason Dara ended up. Yeah, it was one of the things that brought him to Peterborough. You know, that yeah. made him aware of you know who Peterborough were because he was a, a Liverpool fan running a very successful business in Spain at the time. Seventeen years ago, it was when he um, bought Peterborough. Um, you know, what I see is just somebody, as you say, he's kind of made public pronouncements about whether he stays, whether he goes. I think that evolves around what he thinks is in the best interest of the football club. Everything that I see is somebody who's just really committed to driving the best outcomes he can for the football club. And, you know, sometimes that situations happen where it just makes sense for him to want to stick around to make sure that the club's in a good place. Yeah. And and I think it's, I think for a lot of people that do get involved in clubs, they don't, at the time they do it, I don't think they believe that they'll get as emotionally bought into it as they do. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to walk away. Um, I, can, I can only imagine that what goes through his head and what, what went through his head in the build up to that announcement of, of stepping away. Yeah, you know, I think that um, a lot of football club owners, that they are successful because they have an addictive personality. And what I mean by that is they're successful in business, which gives them the ability to yeah. have the funds to buy a football club because they've been really successful and what goes into somebody who does that is you know an awful lot of focus a lot of drive a lot of desire and this like i say addictive personality sometimes and yeah. so you know you transition that into football i think a lot of times people look at owners and think well they're distant or they're not communicating like i want or you know whatever it is they're still at least from my experience behind the scene very driven people 
that yeah. are very committed about the club that they have uh, you know ownership over and you know I think most of them see it as being that they have conservatorship or you know guardianship or they realize that they're in this football club in this moment in time but that the club will be around was around a lot before them and will be around a lot after them and so yeah. there's a responsibility that comes from that to, to ensure that they continue right afterwards yeah no I I, I completely agree and I, I hope that at some stage in the future we get to have you and Dara on for mm -hmm. a chat and we can we can we can get the words from his mouth and see if we can we can maybe put some in of our own and get him to yes. agree and then yeah like he'll sign me on a three year deal up front for Peterborough. <laughs> I'm 34 now. I can go until 37, I think. But yeah, um... you know, he's usually looking at the youth. I'm afraid. You know, if you can go into his academy at 16, then that was probably your best time. If I shave, yeah. Well, you never know. If I shave, um, I look weird. Um, but <laughs> Phil, thank you very much for coming on again, guys. The winner of best overall podcast for the EFL is the Hard Truth Podcast. Uh, Phil and Dara. It's, it's every week, isn't it? Yeah, there's be some times that we don't do it every week just based on uh, schedules. You know, we both, at the end of the day, both Dara and I are running businesses and Dara's doing a lot to, his kids are just starting to go to college. So there's things he's doing on that. So there'll be some times when we're not able to do it every week, but, um, you know, we've, we're, we recorded this week episode 27 for this season. So uh, if it's not every week, it's, you know, two and three. It's, it's, there's always something in the works. Yeah. Always something that works. And for anyone who's not listened to you, what, what would you what would be your advert if someone said, "Give me a give me a line that would get me to buy into what you guys do"? I I don't know. I mean, that's a great question. I think that um, we're all about just uncovering, as the title says, the hard truth about what really goes on behind the scenes. Um, you know, anything from financials to sponsorships to you know agents to the roller coaster. Um, if you really want to hear from a football club owner to see what it's really like behind the boardroom, then um, I think that we do a, 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 as, as good a job as we possibly can in bringing that to the fore. <laughs> Without saying too much and getting in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, honestly, Phil, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, congratulations again. We will be getting, uh, there, there, there is an actual trophy. Oh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get it in the trophy cabinet. Yes. Um, I'm not sure if there's two or if there's one. We'll uh, fight so it out. To fight it out, yeah. yeah. But we'll, I want that filmed. Um, All right. And we'll 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 put it out online. <laughs> um, but Phil, thank you very much for coming on. And guys, I'm not sure what the next award is that's coming up um, because I've not edited it yet. So guys, we are here now second. with uh, we have Jill. We have is it Sal? Are we calling you Sal? Is that what we're going you can with? Call me Sal, yeah. As long yeah. as you're not talking to Jill, because you shouldn't call her Sal. No, well, <laughs> actually, I've called Jill worse. Don't worry. Um, we're joined by uh, Jill. Jill's Sal. called us worse as well. Yeah, yeah, true. Tonight alone. Um, <laughs> Representing Her Game 2 tonight, you're both the Her Game 2 advocates for your individual clubs. Uh, Hartlepool and, I believe, Sutton. Am I right in saying Sutton? It is. Yeah. I, I didn't know Sutton had fans. Really? No, I'm joking. You don't know much about football then, do you? I'm joking. I, I love Sutton. I love You've got that big giraffe. Uh, it's great. But, yeah, guys, welcome. Honestly, thank you for coming on. It's, it's, uh, it's nice to see you. You're welcome. Nice so, to be here. Yeah, let's 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 jump in let's talk about what you guys do tell us a little bit about her game too what it means what you're doing around your clubs and then what it means for you guys to be nominated for fan group of the year because you've been nominated by supporters not by a panel or anything it's supporters that have put your names forward all right well her game too to put it you know in the simplest possible way is a campaign looking to end sexism in football towards football fans and players, basically. And that's pretty much what we're for, isn't it, Jill? Yeah, that's right. Sort of anyone work, any women working in football as well. How did you guys get involved with with it? How does how does a person get involved with it? Because I'm, I'm guessing there's no limit to how many people you'll allow to, to, to become connected because, you know, the more the merrier. Mm. How does someone get involved with this with this sort of thing? Because you're seeing it's growing. You're obviously on on uh, Sky Sports the other night. We've, we're seeing you everywhere now. And you've got, I think, you've got a game tomorrow, which is your heart, her game, two game, Jill, I believe, isn't it? And then yeah, next right, week. Fingers crossed. As long as it goes ahead, we'll get it going. Yep. Yeah, no snow or ice. Uh, Have a hair dryer. <laughs> <laughs> Bradford's next week, which is against Hartlepool as well. So you get two her games, two games in a row. Um, yeah, how does someone get involved? Well, it's just kind of um, the, the clubs, clubs that are partnered up with a campaign, um, 
they are sort of asked to nominate an ambassador. Mm. Um, funnily enough, for me, it was slightly different because I'd been interested in the campaign for ages. I saw what, what they were doing and I thought, this is brilliant. This is really what we need. Because I've seen a lot of sexism in football, I'm not going to lie. Um, but I never thought about actually becoming involved because I simply just didn't have the spare time. Um, but so many people um, said, oh, you'd be so good for this. You'd be so good for this. Sutton's partnered up. I don't have anyone. Oh, go on. You should do it. You should do it. Basically, um, almost like the campaign nominated me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but you do have to like put in a proper application form. It's not just like anyone can do it because the whole idea is that the people who are um, involved with the campaign are the people who have the campaign values at heart. So we don't want just sort of anyone who... Mm. It doesn't really care that much. We don't want just anybody involved. We're all very special people, aren't we, Jill? Oh, yes, extremely. It's all about <laughs> drive, isn't it, I suppose, about the, having that drive to get that message across and, and make sure that it works in, in the club. Because I, I think you're right, There's it is a problem. It's not. I don't think it's as much as a, much of a problem as it was in, in years gone by. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think on social media, obviously, it is, and you're seeing it a hell of a lot more now. Like, we've been laughing this week, Jill, about just knowing what's coming whenever you've put a tweet out about some, a female member of staff at Hartlepool. Mm. You see it all the time. Whenever a hard game to post comes up, mm. it's it's flooded with comments and it's like, why? Yeah. Is, we don't see that much in real life at the ground. We don't see a lot of issues. It's very mm. welcoming, family-oriented type thing. I'm not saying it doesn't happen at all, but other clubs have it much worse. I yeah. see it more online. Definitely. But I got involved slightly different to sell. Pools weren't partnered up. I'd seen the campaign advertised for ambassadors to join. And like Sal said, you sort of have a little interview, see if you're sort of suitable. And then, then when I was announced ambassador, that's when I started hounding the club, <laughs> for want of a better word, and trying to get contact, contacts within the, the club and yeah. stuff. So I did it that way around. So Nice. So to be nominated... Obviously, fans are recognising the work that you're doing. What does it mean to you guys to be put amongst? I mean, we had 700 people vote across the category sites. Like 700 people put in individual votes, and you were the top four for the category. So you've got a high number of votes there, and it's 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 mm -hmm. huge. We don't have a huge number of followers, so the votes only stayed sort of within our reach, really. But to get 700 people voting was was mad. But then for you guys to come out top four is a big big thing what what does it mean to be nominated that's amazing honestly do you know what makes me really happy is that this shows that people care mm -hmm. you know it, 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 we, we can see there's there's a lot of sexism out there like you said put sort of the social media comments and stuff like that and for that many people to be voting for you know this campaign's making a difference it's it's fighting against that sort of thing that's what means a lot i think yeah definitely Makes it worthwhile. Makes yeah. it worthwhile all the work that you're doing. What what would it mean to win? Gosh. <laughs> Raising more awareness, getting our name out there even more than it already is. Absolutely. Mm. Mm. Interesting. Interesting. Uh Grant, have you got anything you want to add? Any questions? Um I don't really have anything I think to to question in, no. I've got some uh, Right. I've got some. Are you ready? I'm going to do it. This one is special to us more so than any of the other awards. Since we started doing this a year ago, we've watched how hard this whole organization works to make things a safe place for everyone at football. We could not be prouder to announce the winner of this year's fan group of the year. It's her game. Two. <laughs> So, congratulations, guys. You have won. Amazing. Thank you. Um, wow. So, yeah, you, were, you obviously you were top four. It then went to a mm. panel of 10, uh, between eight and 10. We, we don't even why, know. Why do you get confused every time we say a panel of Because 10. I don't know if it was eight or 10, and I don't want to get it wrong, and I'm trying to remember what I said on the other recordings. It's a 10. Right, it's a panel <laughs> of 10, um, and we... We had to all privately vote and put stuff in, and um, yeah, we found out obviously whenever I messaged you guys. I think it was last night. We we found out then, and yeah, we uh, 
yeah, you've won. You've won fan, fan group of the year. And yeah, it just shows that people actually are paying attention to what you're doing. There's all people who are negative online always, always scream the loudest, and it's always going to be the case. But yeah, absolutely, I think because locally we get a lot of we get a lot of backing. Like as I say, in the town, a lot of the grassroots teams of girls just think it's an absolutely amazing campaign. And the minute you put something on social media, you get that one person, maybe one that up one negative comment, and it just it really knocks you. <laughs> what, what, <laughs> what, to remember all the positives and all the, the people who are saying you're doing great things and that's what you've got to drown out all of the negative sounds so well, I love you know, seeing if, those really if, if, well, if there's no one being negative at all then our campaign wouldn't be needed would it mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. it kind of shows that we are needed really yeah. i love and seeing it when you get that one comment that comes mm -hmm. in and then everyone just jumps on that comment oh, yeah. of that person yeah. and just comes to the defense it's great yeah it's usually me <laughs> yeah, exactly. Really I'll be sat at work and it'll just, Jill's name will pop up on my screen. I'll be like, "Well, she's tweeted," and I'll just go straight on. I'm like, "What? Who am I coming up against today?" Oh, yeah, okay. There I you need, go. you know, like the bat sign. We need one with Laura yeah. Little, so I can just flash out, and then you two can fly in. Oh, <laughs> you can't put anything in the sky above Bradford. People before it, police and everything, like seeing lights. <laughs> I think the world's ending. But no, honestly, guys, you you were Great. nominated. You were. The thing is, then I think you were the one category as far as nominations were concerned that you weren't just top four, you were head and shoulders above everyone else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then in terms of votes, I'm confident we have obviously I ain't had it confirmed yet, but I, from what I've, we've been told, it was unanimous, like, unanimous oh. across the board from all brilliant. 10 people that were involved. Oh, that's in brilliant! Board. So, start to my weekend, guys. Thank a you. Good start. Um, hopefully, it continues. Now you can focus on. Preparing for the National League. Um, <laughs> so very nice. I'm I have to get that in. I have to get that in. Don't, yeah, don't worry, Sal. We're all right. Us, we, you know, us top half teams, just relaxing, <laughs> enjoying it. You know, grinding out the easy results and then losing to Rochdale. But we won't talk about that. But yeah, no. Um, honestly, guys, thank you very much for coming on. It's been. Really hard to keep it a secret because we didn't want people to know before they came. You try on. very hard, to be honest. No, but we didn't want people to know that that you'd that you'd won before you came on. We thought, well, let people come on and think that they're doing a oh, let's let's talk about being nominated thing. That's um, right, bang. <laughs> off topic. Salford have scored in the 85th minute. It's three um, two against crew. Against crew. Bloody Salford. Fuming. Um, Guys, we'll move on to the next category. Stick around. Um, the, there's going to be like a transitional effect now, which goes and moves into the next category. But congratulations to her game too. Fan group of the year 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you. Stressful. My hair's falling out since I started doing these. Um, but we are joined right now by Mark Dunford. Now, Mark, you are nominated for League One and Two Journalist of the Year. Which is, I mean, I don't think Crawley are going to be in League One next season, so you're not going to have to worry no. about it from that perspective. <laughs> um, but hopefully they'll still be in League Two. You've been covering Crawley, and I think it's fair to say that you've probably had the busiest season of any club reporter in our leagues. Yeah, How's absolutely. You? Yeah, so it's, it's great to be nominated, obviously. Um, yeah, well, I've been covering Crawley for sort of on and off for about, 18 years now 2006 i think it was so yeah 17 18 years and um properly started around the steve evans era so that was interesting at that time but this year well i'll say this season just pre this season obviously from that moment a certain former manager got that phone call in mansfield to tell him to go home yeah. um it's been absolutely crazy i mean the summer was just normally we have a little bit of a relaxing summer don't worry about football too much but it was all this all the talk of, with Wagme coming in these american owners are they going to ruin the club are they going to be successful um the fans were mostly thought they were going to ruin the club and a lot of them are seeing that as actually yes they have ruined our club but i don't know i think there are some positives to take um but on the pitch there hasn't been hardly any positives at all um kevin betsy played some lovely football but it wasn't League Two football. wasn't going to get him anywhere. 
Um, and then Lewis Young, I mean, a lot of the talk at the time was everybody wanted Lewis Young, the players, mm. the fans, everybody wanted Lewis Young. He had a really good run. He was nominated for manager of the month, I think, yeah. um, during that period. Um, but then when Matthew Everington came in, I think a lot of people thought, oh, we're going to have another Kevin Betsy on our hands here. And yeah, nobody had really had time to find out whether he was a Kevin Betsy or not because of what happened there. And now, finally, I think they have got the right person in Scott Lindsay. May not be the most exciting football at times, but he's going to get results and he's proven that so far. And hopefully, yeah. I think they have got enough to stay up, certainly with Lindsay. But just everything going on behind the scenes with Wagme, begin with, they were all very transparent. Uh, wanted everyone, wanted to talk to everyone. And then when things didn't go so well, it's harder to get hold of them. And that, and as you know, as well as I do with that. So, um, yeah, yeah it, it's certainly been very interesting. And yeah, it's it's been, as a journalist, it's been absolutely great to cover. It is. And that, that's the thing. It's like people said to us, the when we were, when we were partnered with Wagme, like they, they were, they were unhappy that we were, so happy but at the same time it's like that's what you want that's what we needed that level of like it's a dream really isn't it? to have a team that's doing what they're doing in the league essentially trying to live out a ted lasso story but it's showing you what would happen if ted lasso went really wrong mm. um and that's like that's what you we you want to see uh, look people might not like crawley people obviously within the fan base people don't like wag me but from an outside perspective they have given this league a, a whole different talking point this season. Like every club has spoken about them. Every club's fans know who they are. Not for the best reasons, but no. I, yeah, like like you say, I, I think, and I've said this very, very openly, I, I do believe that there are good intentions. I believe that those good intentions are outweighed by some naivety mm. and and a lack of experience. Um I've got a clip to show you. Okay. I'm gonna I'm gonna play a clip to you. So I hope you're ready for this. <laughs> this this is just for you. Lovely. I look forward to it. Ho ho ho. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm back, and I'm happy to say that I am not an NFT. Journalists have it hard in all ways, but football must be the worst. Especially if the team you're covering is down near the bottom of the league and fighting for survival. So congratulations to Mark Dunford, you've had more shit to put up with this season than most journalists would ever face in a career, and you've done it whilst keeping the fans in the loot to the best of your ability. We salute you. So, wow. in case you haven't realised, you've won. Um, that's wow, amazing. Thank experience. you very much. <laughs> no worries. So, yeah, you were... It, it was a it was a unanimous thing. I think we... So, 700 people voted at the original, like, did nominations, and you were in the top four. It went to a panel of 10 people. And, like, we all had our own votes. And, like, afterwards, we spoke. Like, we kind of said, oh, look, who did you vote for on this? Who did you vote for on this? And the journalist thing was quite simple to do because it was just like the, the level of abuse that you've <laughs> had thrown at you this season and the stuff that you've had to deal with. Because at the time, at times, sorry, this season, you've been the only contact for Crawley that fans have been able to get anything out of. Mm, yeah. You know, the owners have been quiet. The management have been quiet. The club itself has been quiet. And you've been still plugging away. And sometimes there's been... You're, you've been the only person that owners have spoken to. So, yeah, it was for us, it was an easy decision to make. So, right, congratulations. That's lovely, <laughs> that's lovely to hear. Thank you very much. No, it, like I said, it's been as a journalist, it has been a dream in that sense. Yeah. But, yeah, but actually, that is the most what you've just said there is the most rewarding bit is when you have given the fans something that they didn't know. And that, and, yeah. and a lot of them do show appreciation when that happens. And that is the most rewarding part of it. Yeah. De definitely. Yeah. And there's, there's more to come as well. We we all know that this is not a this story okay. ain't over. This story is <laughs> no. far from over, um, yeah. because there's either going to be a, a, a resurgence Phoenix next season where the club really push on, or it's going to get worse. You know, yeah. th th I don't think there's going to be a middle ground in this because it, it can't. 
No, <laughs> no, absolutely. Yeah, they're, they're not finishing 14th in League Two next year if they do stay up. It will be, it will be one yeah. end or the other, I reckon. Yeah, but they, yeah. I mean, as we've discussed before as well, they just need they need to get someone in who knows League Two football to just yeah. be that CEO to be able to make those decisions yeah. and not have an owner sitting in the subs in the um in the dugout for a no, game. That, I don't think he'll do that again. No. Um, no, and, uh, and yeah, I actually I felt I'll be honest with you, I felt bad. I, I watched that and I felt bad. But again, everyone was talking about it. Yeah. That's that's kind of what they want. You know, put good or bad eyes. Yeah. They want eyes on them. And they got I the eyes on them. That. Yeah, <laughs> um, right or wrong reasons. They've had yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, Mark, congratulations. So, no, thank you. And really two journalist it. of the year, and yeah, we'll uh, hopefully be able to see you next year because you'll still be covering a League Two club if they stay oh, up. Yeah, we'll do, and I think <laughs> they will. I think they will genuinely. So, do, 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 do you think it's Hartlepool and Rochdale? I think so. Yeah, I think Crawley have the games Crawley have got. I mean, they've got Colchester at home. They've obviously got to go to Hartlepool, but they've they've got a couple of games against teams that haven't got much to play for towards the end as well. So I think yeah. I think they'll have enough. I think Hartlepool have probably got too much to do. That big game at last game at season versus Swindon. That's what it's all yes. down to, isn't it? The showdown. Absolutely. Absolutely. The Scott Lindsay yeah. Derby. <laughs> yes, indeed. And if, if Crawley <laughs> needs something from that game and they get it, the Swindon fans aren't going to be happy, are they? No, so, uh... they're, not, they're not happy anyway at the minute. So I don't think you, <laughs> you're just compiling the misery at this point. Um, yeah. yeah, Mac, thank you very much for coming on. And uh, yeah, good luck for the rest of the season. Great stuff. Thanks for the award. Grant, do you want to introduce him? I, yeah. <laughs> and there's the intro done. Come on, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so here we are, everyone. We're on to the next one coming up. We have Matt Farley with us. He is back. He has bad lighting again. It seems to be every time we record with Matt, he is in a terrible, <laughs> terrible place to record. Why? You, it, it always it's like it's like the pub outside Crawley again. <laughs> yeah, literally, he's always at, you're always outside or in the car or just in the dark somewhere. You just um, can't keep me in, unfortunately. No, you can't. But honestly, thanks for joining us. And uh, yeah, um, first of all, welcome and congratulations for the nomination. How, how, well, for those who don't know you, tell us a little bit about who you are, what you do, why you do it. Yeah, well, look. Name is Matt Farley, a fanatical Stevenage Football Club fan. Let's just get that in there. Absolutely fanatical. Don't miss a single game. Buzzing over this season. I just want to throw that in there as well. Um, and I'm the host of the Stevenage Football Club podcast, the podcast we've done since 2019. Um, the reason why we do it is just to give supporters at the club a bit of a, a platform to connect with. And, uh, and yeah, we love doing it. It's our main hobby. Nice, nice. Who do you do it with? Uh, so, do you know what? It's got it's got to a point now where I just do it with just loads of people. So, or, originally, a, a few years ago, my co-host was a guy called Reese. Yeah. Um, oh yeah, yeah. Is it uh, uh, Reese Donnelly? Yeah, he follows us. We've interacted with him. We've argued with Reese many times. <laughs> oh yeah. Do you know <laughs> over, what? The, over the three goals against Bradford. Uh, I argue with him all the time. He's a right idiot, Reese. But he's a lovely. You say we. You say we, Liam. You. Yeah. <laughs> right. That is me. Literally. Yeah. yeah. Um. Originally, I coached at Reese, but I've, I've. This season's been crazy. I've done it with so many people. I've had. Mike on who I think's been on the six oh six many times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I've had loads of different people kind of co-host it. So um, yeah, that's how the format works. Nice, nice. So you're actually in with the club as well, aren't you? So you've you've got like I think you were doing some stuff recording at the ground. I've been down. I came down and met up with you. We watched the most boring game of football. I think. Yeah, I've hang seen on a sec. The most entertaining <laughs> thing. We got to yes. get it in there. Yeah. We, oh, it was coming. <laughs> the the, the ball best... to the face. Yeah, Matt took during the warm up. We were both just sat on our phones, and I just hear this <laughs> slap. And I look, and Matt is like this in his chair, bright red here. And the, the keeper has in the warm up parried it wide, and it's smashed him square in the face. I have never been happier to see something because we'd have never known. No, no. 
Do you know what? I didn't actually think that my face could get even uglier, but somehow it did. On that, you on that beautiful bastard. Bless you. You've interviewed Steve Evans, as you haven't you, Israel? I've had I've had the big man on the uh, the iconic figure that I love to call him the most polarizing figure. He's been on the pod. He's yeah, polarizing's a word for it. God, uh, yeah, really, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, what was that like? Do you know what? It was it was amazing. And and if I'm honest, right, I wasn't even nervous. It was mm. like we had a chat down his down his booze up, we had a pint in between us. It was really funny actually because when we had him on, it was the morning after the late Orient draw. Uh, Ooh, over yeah. the Christmas period. Mm -hmm. So um, I had him on the next day and it was really funny. Before we started recording, I went to him, would you be doing this now if we'd lost yesterday? And he went, yeah, probably not. <laughs> like that. Yeah, I was like, no. what did he, God, we didn't lose. Did he have a drink with him? What was he drinking? Uh, do you know what? I No, I swear he had a beer with him. I swear he had a pint. He was drinking in front of him because I made a joke before we started recording saying, it's like being down the pub, Steve. And he went, yeah, it is. He had a beer because yeah. he, <laughs> he he did it. I remember him doing it in his like kitchen conservatory area. So he definitely had a beer with him. Um, but yeah, we had the big man on. He was great. He was he was so good. We, we recorded. Someone said to me prior to it, actually, he said, if you get more than 40 minutes out of him, you know, you know he's enjoyed it. Mm. And I went, okay. And the pod ended up going for an hour and ten minutes. So, <laughs> yeah, he was, he's talking to the most talkative person ever. Yeah. Guess, but, um, you know, it, it must have been a good one, yeah. Well, we all know how happy this man is about to be. Ladies and gentlemen, please give it up for your League 2 podcast of the year, the Steve Najefsi podcast. <laughs> Joking, mate. We're not joking. No. Yes, sir. Congratulations. You're me. Congratulations. No, sir. Oh, that's amazing. Lee oh, Two podcast wow. of the year, the Stephen E. Jeff C. podcast. Yeah, we. Uh, yeah, that's what these are. These aren't. Everyone knows who's watching that you guys have won before you start talking, and you haven't got a clue. It's magical. Oh, I can't believe it. Literally, literally my face is like that. I'm glued. I'm glued <laughs> the, thing, the thing is, what? when the video's playing, I can still see your face and I could see the moment of realisation kicking. Well, do you know what I started getting really panicky about? So when you cut to the video, I was like, oh, no. Have we froze here? Should this be happening? And then when it just come up, congrats. I was like, what? Oh, no way. Do you know what? Do you know what? I love you two so much. Do you, you know what? It's too. not just us, though, mate. There was it was a panel of I think eight or ten. And ten of us wow. that, that voted. So, so yeah, you've you've done across the board. Like it's there were there were I think seven hundred people originally did nominations. So you were top four of the categories for that. Wow. And then it went down to a, a wow. panel of ten, including me and Grant. Um, and everyone voted privately, so we didn't know and think we found out. Last night, Grant, didn't we? Wow. Yeah, it was last night we all the winners of it. So. Happy days, man. Oh, my God. And no, I just want to say, actually, you know, thanks to um, all the people that voted, because I actually had um, a good few weeks ago, I had quite a few people message me saying that they'd voted for us. And I said, oh, look, thanks. Like, you know, oh, no, thanks to everyone. Oh, my God. And now you've won it. We're tiny. <laughs> Yo, well, you're not, not, though. This is the thing. It's not about... It... It's, it, you know, Stephen Hitch might be a small club, but <laughs> yes. it's what you guys are doing out there, the noise that you're making, uh, the fun that you're having, yeah. and just all the interactions that you're having is obviously rubbing off the content you're creating. As I said, the interview with Steve Evans, it's all top class stuff. So it's well, well deserved, mate. Oh, no, thanks. Like Sorry, I just went in the dark then. God. Um, <laughs> no, no, thank you. No, I mean, it's just so much. Yeah, because, you know, like the podcast, like, yeah, we just do it because we love like our hour of talking about Stephen E Football Club every week. So it's um whenever we get yeah. to do it, it's just great. And then I think what's the nice thing as well, when we walk around the club and you get someone and I had it on um the weekend, sadly in Rochdale, but um on, on another note, no, I had someone uh, 
come up on the weekend and say, um, oh, love the recent episode, da 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 da, da. Mm. And it's, it's really nice to get that feedback because that's why we do it. We do it for all, all the people, do you know what I mean? So, mm, yeah, oh, yeah, a massive thanks to everyone. That's, that's amazing. That's so great. That's amazing. Right, well... We uh, like I said, we we did we like 10 15 minutes with each, and then we're going to cut into the next one now. Um, but Matt, stick around after we finish recording, we are we'll have a chat with you. But yes. uh, guys, the next category again, we don't know what it is because we haven't decided the order, it might even be the last category. This we don't know because we haven't done it yet. We'll either see you there or see you later, <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> Love yeah, but Matt, thanks for coming on, and congratulations. Once again. Oh, your socials. What are your socials? Oh, tell us your socials. Yeah, we need to keep them. What do you want, that. the podcast or my one? All of, of it. Mate. All of it. All of them. Right. So I'll give the podcast first. So that's at TSFC Podcast uh, on Twitter. And then my Twitter handle is at Farley Jeans, just with a normal F and a normal. I know it's so, <laughs> so generic, isn't it? Farley Jeans. Do you know? I feel like I need to change that at some point. Perhaps. You can do it. You can. It does let you do it now. So if you want to change yeah. it, get it changed. Uh, I'm going to have to change it. Um, do you know, yeah, do you know those... what you can do as well? You can't do yeah. it yet, and we'll talk to you about it. Why? Talk to you about it after. But you'll be able to change your podcast to award-winning. Podcast. Oh my god! I didn't even think about. That. Oh, it's all about the benefits. Oh my god! That's yes. it. Next up is the blue tick, fellas. It's happening. It's happening. It's coming. It's happening. It's coming. <laughs> it's happening. But yeah, go and follow those Twitter handles. That would be great. Oh my god! It's made my week. <laughs>